guys, welcome to the fourth video in the harmonic scanning series. All right, and in the last video, we had detected some bullish Gartleys. We were not fortunate enough to find any bearish Gartleys, but um, you know, let's not cry about it yet. So now what we want to do is let's just go ahead and start to clean this up a little bit. So I'm going to make a new file, and let's call this. Um, harmonic functions all right so we're going to put all of our our hard work into this harmonic functions file so that we don't have to let our work in our play intermix i'm going to close off all these other ones that i have here all right so we have our harmonic functions file so let's go ahead and do our imports to this one all right, so now that we have our imports, the first thing we want to do is make our peak finding function so that we don't have to do it um, in the in the loop all the time. I mean, I mean we're going to do it in the loop anyway, but let's just make a function for it. So let's call this function peak detect and this is going to take the inputs of the price and it's also going to take the order that we're going to pass into the, the function. And let's default that order at 10. All right, and let's just copy over, all right, because we can. So we'll just, we'll go like that. Um, so yeah, we will, we'll just get up to here. Okay, so now that we have that in there, now we don't need this anymore because we're going to we're going to pass that in directly into the function so that it's we know for sure that there's no possibility of a look ahead bias. And so now we have the order here but we'll set this as equal to order that we're passing in to the function up here but it's already defaulted at 10. Okay, so now we should this should work. All right, so this should work um, perfectly already. Um, but let's let's go ahead and return all the things that we need from here so we'll return start and actually let's do it in this order we'll return the index the current pattern start and end and now let's go ahead and see if it will work for this so all we have to do is we'll do uh, idx current pattern start and end and we'll do peak detect and we'll do prices dot values um, everything up to i and we'll leave the order b but we also need to import it up here so from harmonic functions import all and let's just go check here so everything is looking good here except for this we don't need this anymore so it's going to be length of price, okay? And so this should work. And instead of IDX, let's return current IDX. And just in case we need it later. So we have peak detect, and this should work. So um, print, it works. If it works, and then we'll break out to know if it works. So we'll do break. No values. Okay, so this is the problem right here. We don't need to do values anymore since we're already passing that in. So it didn't work that time, but it, it will work this time. Okay, it works. Okay, so now that it works, now we can make a function out of this guy right here. Before we do that, let's let's uh, make a new list called moves, and these are going to be the specific price moves. So we'll do X A, A B, B C, and C D. So now that we have all of these stored in one list, um, we'll make it possible to pass it into a new function. So let's copy all of this over, and let's make a new function. So we'll call this function is Gartley. Okay, and the isGartley function is going to take a couple of different inputs it's going to need. 
So it's going to need the price moves. And it's going to need the error allowed. And let's set a default for this one as, um, no, let's not set a default. We'll just pass it in every time. It doesn't matter. Okay, so now we have is Gartley from moves. And so we'll do now, we'll do XA is moves zero. And I will just copy this and fast forward this process. Alrighty, so now that we have those all, so now we've got the moves directly, so now we should be able to copy that. Oh, crap. It will copy it over. Sorry, I thought I lost it there for a second. I thought I was going to have to rewrite all of it. All right, so now we have this, and we also wanted to pass in error allowed. I forgot it. So now that we have error allowed passed in, it should return, or we should, what we want to do is we want to return if it's a pattern or not, okay? So the way we can do that is like this. So we're inside here, and so if it is a pattern, let's go ahead and return one, okay? And that's because this is going to be for a bullish pattern. But if it's a bearish pattern, then we should, um, oh, and I forgot one thing here, and that's that we need to, we need to set those ranges, but we should set these ranges like outside, because we don't need to do it twice. We only need to do it once, because the ranges stay the same. So if we set those ranges out here, so now we have two nested if statements, and we're returning, okay. So that works, and we can get rid of this one here. So now we got the nested ifs down here. I'm going to get rid of this plot. And I'm also going to do return down here. But this is going to be return minus one. Okay, that's because this is for a bearish pattern. The next thing we need to do is if there's no pattern at all, and that's um, else, and then we will return and we're going to return it nan. So numpy.nan and we'll put that else down here as well. Okay, and then in the off chance that we don't hit either of these loops, um, which is possible, then we will return numpy.nan as well. So that's what we're going to do to check if it's a Gartley pattern. So now we have our is Gartley function. And so let's go ahead and test that puppy out now. So we can delete this. And remember, we still have current pattern and uh, current index that we access from the peak detection function. And so now we have our moves, and we should be able to do is Gartley now. So let's do result is equal to is Gartley, and we'll give it the moves and the error allowed. And then we want to do this. If res is equal to 1, so if we get the Gartley pattern, then we should plot. So let's do uh, plt.plot. I'm just going to do the same thing here. Alrighty, so let's go ahead and run it now that we have that plot and check if our Gartley function is working. Alrighty, so there it is. It looks like, and we've seen this pattern before in the past video, uh, or past two videos, I forget which one. So we know that this this is working now. So it's working the same fashion. So now we have our Gartley pattern, right? And that's great. So now what we can do is we can do a different pattern now. So the next pattern that we're going to do is the butterfly pattern. So the butterfly pattern, and I'll pull it up on the screen here, is pretty much exactly the same as the Gartley, but we just have different levels. So all we're going to need to do here is we'll go here and we'll copy our entire isGartley function, and we'll just make a new function based on that one called isButterfly. And I'll pull the butterfly up there right, right around here somewhere. And so now we have some different ranges. So AB is... Instead of the 618, now it's the point 0.786. So 0 0.786, 0 
And then we have for BC, it's 382 to 886, so that's the same, so we can leave that one. And then for this one, it's 1618 to 2618. So 1618 to 2618 of BC. Okay, so that's it. Um, that should, I mean, it's relatively simple because all these patterns have the same structure and that's what makes it so convenient. And so now our is Gartley function is booming. It's ready to go. So let's test it out now. Um, so we'll just call this one Gart and we'll call this one but or we just call it but, why not, it's funny. So we'll do is, and I think we forgot to rename this guy. So we'll rename it is butterfly. Is butterfly moves and error allowed again is being passed in. And actually what I'm gonna do is I wanna get that plot back Okay, so now we have butterfly. So let's plot if we get a butterfly pattern now. So now if our function is working correctly, we should get a plot if we find a butterfly. Alrighty, so look, we got a bullish butterfly pattern and it looks like we would have made money if we, if we set our stop loss correctly so that we didn't get exited out down here and we would have made that trade, but it's going to recalculate and find the better entry point, which is right here. So that one, would have, we would have made money. We lost here, uh, lost again. And we are going to have to implement a way to protect ourselves from this kind of thing happening, where we are keep trading on the same retracements or the same pattern. And the way we can do that is by tightening up this error. Okay, so if we tighten up this error, then it's going to be a smaller range of data that the pattern can fall under. So um, that's going to make it a little bit better. So it looks like a bullish uh, butterfly, but this one is incorrect. Again, incorrect, incorrect. All right, a bullish butterfly that we would have made a lot of money here. Okay, so this is a very good trade. Looks like, like a couple hundred pips or so over like three or four hours, so that's incredible. So you guys get the point. Now we have kind of like cleaned up this file a little bit and we're starting to make functions. In the next video, I'll do the remaining two functions, the bat and the crab. Um, really simple to implement, and I'm sure you guys could actually just do it by yourself, but I'll show it anyway. And then we'll kind of get into the nitty gritty of like actually placing trades and how we can simulate that and so we can kind of build a strategy based on this. Um, if you guys are interested in this, keep watching. Um, the next few videos, where I'm gonna show the money-making potential here, and so I hope you guys are enjoying it as much as I am, and have a good night.